questions 81 to 84. Okay, so we learned that uh, most organic compounds appear white or colorless, for example, egg white, and that some organic compounds have some color. For example, egg yolk is orange, and would you like to pause and guess why egg yolk is orange? So hopefully you're connecting this to beta carotene, question 83, and the fact that beta carotene uh, gives an orange color. And yes, it's molecules that are related to beta carotene in yolk that give it that orange color. And so you can conclude that those molecules must either have aromatic rings or just uh, conjugation. I think it would have been a little bit more clear if Acer had written these groups usually contain aromatic rings and or conjugated bonds. But anyway, we understand what they mean. And then Acer defines the meaning of conjugated bonds. First of all, I just want to establish that aromatic or conjugation leads to color. So this is a rule that I would write down to make sure that I don't make any mistakes, especially when there are multiple questions based on these ideas. And then uh, you can look at your own exam paper and see the meaning of conjugation. Here is a single bond between two double bonds. Here is a single bond between two double bonds, and this time the bond is with oxygen. So Acer is trying to show you the differences, the different situations where this could arise. And here's a single bond between multiple bonds again, but this is a triple bond bet uh, between two carbon atoms and a double bond, so that is also a form of conjugation. And here's a single bond between a double bond and a triple bond. Now this group, you shouldn't be surprised because already in this exam, we already, um, I asked you to pause during one of the earlier questions to see if you can draw this uh, cyano group. So just to confirm that, of course, nitrogen, when it bonds to itself, N2, please don't ask me what this is. I just couldn't get that done. So anyway, uh, when nitrogen is N2, it has a lone pair and it has a triple bond in between the two nitrogen atoms, just like it has a triple bond here. So when you see nitrogen bonded three times, it is neutral. And so this is called the cyano group, but it's also called the nitrile group. It is the same group that's being referred to, carbon bonded to nitrogen. And the only way that this can happen when there is no hydrogen on the nitrogen is with a triple bond to remain neutral. And so what else do we learn? We learned that the greater the number of these groups, meaning the more conjugation in the molecule, therefore there's going to be an increased wavelength of the light that is absorbed. And I also just wanted to underline a point that we are referring to unsaturation because when carbon is bonded to the maximum number of atoms that it can be bonded to, which is four in the neutral state, then we say that carbon is saturated. But when carbon has a double bond or a triple bond, that means those carbons are unsaturated. Okay, so let's move to uh, question 81. It's a beautiful graph. I don't know why it's there. I don't see any purpose to it other than to distract you. And then you are provided with an equation and you are provided all the numbers that are required. You're given 90% of the light passing through a cell. So 90% of the light means that the proportion of light absorbed will be 0 0.9. And then we are given the concentration in moles per liter as 0 0.05, capital letter M is the symbol for moles per liter. And the cell has a width of two centimeters and therefore this is the path length of the cell containing the solution, two centimeters. So we have two times 0 0.05, that's 0.1, 0.9 over 0.1, you can multiply top and bottom by 10, which is multiplying this by the number 1, and that gives us 9 over 1, and so we have 9 liters per mole per centimeter, and that's the answer for question 81, which is B. And now question 82. So we're told that many synthetic dyes are based on azobenzene, and look at what a beautiful molecule it is, azobenzene. Do you notice how every carbon is receiving a double bond and there is a single bond in between every double bond, including when we observe the nitrogens in the middle. And notice that nitrogen 
is neutral and bonded three times. And now we are not surprised that this fully conjugated molecule that has two aromatic groups provides color. Now the question is asking if something was attached to the benzene group which would not increase the wavelength and we already have a rule that increased conjugation increases wavelength. So we would have to find something that does not increase conjugation and that would not increase the wavelength. Answer choice A has the carboxylic acid functional group and therefore there's a double bond to an oxygen. So this is going to increase conjugation and therefore increase wavelength. So that's the incorrect answer. Answer choice B shows the nitrile or cyano group and here we have a triple bond, so a single then a triple bond, so this is a conjugation. Again, this would increase the wavelength. Answer choice C is an alkyl group. That's an alkane minus a hydrogen. In other words, it's a saturated hydrocarbon. I just put a propyl group here just as an example. And you can see that there are no double bonds. There are no triple bonds. So there is no way to increase conjugation or to increase the wavelength. So answer choice C is correct. And answer choice D shows us an aryl group, which means an aromatic hydrocarbon for example, the benzene ring as an attachment. And this is clearly conjugated and would increase the wavelength. Okay, question 83. So we have beta carotene in many of our practice tests. We also have beta carotene in chapter review questions for organic chemistry chapter 4. So I was able to print up a page, thank goodness, because you know that I can't draw this. <laughs> Okay, so the question asks about the structure of beta carotene and the reason the beta carotene is orange. So why does beta carotene have color? It could have color because of aromatic or conjugation. Answer choices A and B refer to the six-membered rings, but these six-membered rings are not aromatic. This is a cyclohexene derivative, but this is not benzene. And the six-membered rings, therefore, are not fully conjugated. So beta carotene fails the aromatic test, but what about conjugation? Well, look, double, single, double, single, double, single, etc., etc. So how often does this happen? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Thus, we have eleven conjugated double bonds, and that can produce color. And just for fun, when you look at this, these double bonds. Do they look all trans to you, all cis to you, or do you think that they are neither all trans or all cis? You can pause to consider your response. Hopefully you would notice that these are all trans and that is energetically favorable. So you have the main group here and then you have a group opposite it. And each time you have a double bond, the main group is opposite. This is just a little group, but the main group is opposite. So the highest priority group is always opposite. So this is all trans. In other words, it is an all E conjugation. Okay, so we've established that the answer has to be either C or D because we've seen that there's a set of 11 conjugated bonds and we know that it's the conjugated bonds that provide the color. So now we just have to understand which color would be absorbed. Well, you might remember the colors of the rainbow. And so if you don't, you can go to physics 9.2.4. And it is remembered according to the mnemonic Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So obviously, this is the red part of the spectrum that includes orange. And this is the blue part of the spectrum. Now remember how Acer loves opposites. So consider this. If you are looking at beta carotene and it looks to be orange, did it absorb orange or did it reflect it? It could not absorb orange, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the orange. So it absorbs the other side of the spectrum and that's why you're able to see this side. And so the answer to question 83 must be C. And now question 84, phenolphthalene, a frequent visitor to the exam, but now we can actually see its structures and we are told that one form is colorless and the other is pink. And of course, it is a very famous acid-base indicator. 
and the idea is that it changes color with pH. Now we just have to apply what we've learned. Conjugation refers to color. Now look at structure 1 and compare it to structure 2 and notice that structure 1 is relatively protonated. You can clearly see the additional H groups towards the top and molecule 1 is not conjugated. You can see that area in the middle of the molecule where it looks like there's an X. That clearly shows that in the middle of the molecule there are two places where there are two single bonds in a row. For example, connecting the benzene ring in the bottom left corner with the phenol in the top right corner. Two single bonds in a row means no conjugation. Now look at the second molecule. It is a deprotonated form. Protons have been removed at the top and it is fully conjugated. Everywhere including the carboxylate anion in the bottom right corner that has a carbon-oxygen double bond to the top left corner of the molecule with the carbonyl group and single bonds throughout in between double bonds. This complete conjugation means it must have color. So this is the color form. Now keep in mind that at low pH you have high hydrogen ion concentration and therefore at low pH you get the protonated form. At high pH you have a lot of base and therefore you get the deprotonated form. And so we conclude that one is the structure at low pH and is colorless and so the answer for 84 is A. And you can review resonance and conjugation in organic chemistry 1.4, 4.1, 5.1 and acids and bases in chemistry 6.1 to 6.6. .6.